Hello and thank you so much for joining me today for another Thought from the Bible. My name is Becky and I am a missionary living here in this beautiful nation of Liberia. Now it's, it's just coming up to around six months since I moved to this country and honestly getting used to living in a new place is not always easy. There's new cultural elements to get used to, how things work, where things are, how you buy even ordinary things, getting used to a entirely new climate. I'm already sweating, I'm recording this at seven in the morning. There are some challenges with getting settled into a new place, for sure. And do you know, in the last week or so, I've, I've actually been having some battles, shall we say. It's been a bit of a challenge. And I think it's because of getting near to approaching that, that six month landmark. Because I had given myself six months to settle in, six months to get used to life before I sort of started taking on any responsibilities or any projects or anything like that. And now, now I'm starting to ask myself, what is my purpose here in Liberia? What am I here to do? What should I be doing? I'm not sure. What should I be focusing on? Should I be writing a new novel? Should I be focusing on Bible teaching? Should I be working with MAF, our, our mission organization here? There are so many options for things that I could do. And that can make it really hard to know where to start, right? You know, which, which is the right thing to do? I wanna do the right thing. And, and that can honestly lead to a feeling of not wanting to do anything for fear of, of getting it wrong. But in the midst of those legitimate and genuine questions that need answering, some, some other thoughts and words started to creep into my mind. You know, things like, well, why bother doing anything? It'll never go anywhere. Why start something new? You'll, you'll never see any success in it. You'll only give up halfway through and quit and never achieve what you should and what your potential is. It's amazing how quickly doubts like that can take hold in our minds and our words turn away from the good, positive things that God says about us into untruths that actually seem quite rational once we give them enough time of day, rational enough for us to start believing them. Well, having thoughts like this kind of reminded me of a verse that I read recently in Matthew chapter 15, verse 18, that says, the words you speak come from the heart. Now this was Jesus speaking here in response to the Pharisees who were objecting to the disciples not ceremonially washing their hands before eating. And Jesus made the point that it's, it's not what we put into our mouths that defiles us, rather it's what comes out of our mouths. The whole passage goes like this, Jesus said, whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body. But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, fal false testimony, slander. The words that we speak reflect what's going on in our hearts. Now you may not be thinking or speaking murder, I hope not, or adultery, but what about anger? What about lust? What about doubt? What about a lack of self-confidence? Those words, those thoughts can reflect what's happening in our heart as well. The words that we speak are powerful. And often those words kind of change when we enter situations that are a little bit challenging and unfamiliar, when we are taken out of an area where we're confident and we find our confidence suddenly shaken and we're not quite sure what we should be doing. That's when we need to really be listening to the words that we're speaking and the thoughts that we're having. I think actually we often recognize when the words that we're speaking aren't healthy and helpful. 
when they're downright sinful or when they don't reflect the fearfully and wonderfully made creations that we are. But it can be harder to stop speaking them. And there can actually even be a bit of a guilt spiral at that point. You know, we start thinking, well, I, I know what I'm thinking and what I'm speaking isn't good, but I can't stop. And I know that I should be quoting all those wonderful, inspirational Bible verses, but instead I just, I can't break free of this spiral. And now I feel worse than ever about it. And I feel further away from God because I just have this guilt in my head on top of whatever it was that was causing those words in the first place. But that is an attitude that we need to change. See, the Bible tells us that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. A guilty response is not going to help us get our hearts straight. Instead of berating yourself, we need to use those thoughts as a cue to check what's in our hearts. When thoughts that shouldn't be there creep into your mind, you can use that as a prompt to draw closer to God, not further away from him. When negative thoughts creep in, you know, as the Bible says, we can choose to focus on whatever is true and noble and right and pure and lovely and admirable and excellent and praiseworthy that won't always be easy. So if you look around you in the world, if you watch the news, when was the last time you saw something good and pure and right on the news? When we just look at social media and see these little snapshots that seem, you know, perfect lives of other people and we feel like ours don't match up, that doesn't help us to think about things that are excellent and praiseworthy. This world doesn't encourage us to think right, but God does, and we can change our thoughts. You can choose how you think. And this is not about living in denial and pretending that everything's okay when it's not. Do you know what? I still have those questions to answer. I still have to decide what I'm gonna do here. I have to see what opportunities will arise and that does lead to this time where where I'm a little bit unsettled and a little bit unsure but I do not have to listen to those doubts I do not have to listen to those thoughts that tell me that I am not good enough instead I can listen to what the Bible tells me that I was created anew in Christ Jesus for a purpose that's the thought that I can choose to listen to. This is not about denial. It is about recognizing that God is great, even in the midst of trials. It's recognizing that God leads us, even when we feel completely lost. It's recognizing that in the midst of our sin, God is gracious and merciful. It's recognizing that God sings over us, calls us his beloved children, even when we are struggling to find anything good to say about ourselves. The more we do this, the more we recognize who we are in God's sight, the more we use those negative thoughts and words as a prompt to remind ourselves of who we really are, according to this book, the less chance those thoughts will have to enter into our minds in the future. It is so important to pay attention to what we're thinking, to what we're speaking, but not to let those things cause guilt in our hearts when we're not right, but instead to push us back to God, to align our hearts with him, to make Jesus the center of everything and not the world around us. It's not always easy, but we can choose how we think. And God is so willing and so able to help us in that journey. 
I hope that was an encouragement to you today. I really do encourage you just this week, just be conscious of what you're thinking about and try, try to align that with God's word. I'll be back on Wednesday next week with another thought from the Bible. So I will see you then.